I know you all love uh, Netflix and the new series Untold Crime and Penalties. The best documentary out of all of those is on the Danbury Trashers. And I have to say this before we bring him on. A.J. Galante was the owner of the team along with his dad, Jimmy. And A.J., actually, we can bring him on. He joins us today from, I can only imagine, New Jersey, up Atlantic Seaboard somewhere. How you doing, A.J.? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Oh, I mean, I wouldn't miss this for the world. And I checked you out, by the way, with my hockey friends that remembered you back in the day with the Danbury Trashers. And you check out. They loved you. They loved you, AJ, with that hockey team. But let me ask you, how has your life changed, if at all, since this documentary dropped here a little while back? I mean, uh, I think I underestimated Netflix's reach, if that makes any sense. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's uh, it, it's been crazy, you know. It's it's been absolutely insane. I mean, um, I, I've been getting thousands of messages from from all over the world. I mean, uh, I, I'm super humbled by just how many people enjoyed the doc, and um, you know how many people, you know, the, the different the different messages they received from it, you know, how how they took it, interpreted it, and um, it's just the whole thing has been incredibly humbling to us. I love it, and that's why the that's why I think the people that know you, AJ, love you because they said you're a humble guy. They said your dad's got money, but you wouldn't know it. He's a hardworking guy. He was raised right. But for those that haven't watched the documentary yet. And you had to reschedule on Thursday. I said, this is perfect. This will give you all time to watch show before Monday when AJ comes. Those that haven't seen it, what's your pitch? Would you tell hasn't seen it, why they should, what it's about? Oh, well, I mean, it's just, it's an insane story. I mean, as I get, as I get older, I just turned 35 about a month ago and, um, you know, it was like a half a half a lifetime ago for me. So it's like looking back as I get older and uh, hopefully a little more mature, I look back and it's just like, I can't even believe we, we were doing some of the things we were doing back then. And uh, it's just a great, it, it's not just that, you know, you don't have to be a hockey fan to like it. I think it's just, a, it's a story about two guys that took a chance, um, winged it. You know, we didn't have some elaborate plan. We just um, were trying to do things to, to, to build our community up, give, give a, a blue-collar town a, a bit of an identity. And, um, you know, we, we caught some lightning in a bottle. You know, there's a lot of good to it. There's a lot of bad to it. Um, so many different layers to the story. And, and frankly, uh, a lot that the doc couldn't get to in about an hour and a half. I mean, there's just so many layers to this story. It's... Um, you know, so many people have told me they, they wish it was a bit longer and uh, it's just been nuts. The whole the whole thing's just been nuts to us. Well, buddy, your king quickly slapped together an eighth episode and one. I understand there's a season now coming to Tiger King. So can you drop it now? The news is there going to be more Danbury Trashers on Netflix. You got to do it, man. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's really up to them. You know what I mean? They they were the ones who essentially pursued us to begin with, you know, about doing this documentary. When I talked to the Way brothers that um, you know, they're the ones that produced the whole untold series and and when they were pitching the idea to us, I kind of was like, "Man, you have Malice in the Palace, Caitlyn Jenner, Christy Martin, you know, you have all these stories and then you have like where how is the Danbury Trashers going to fit into this first season of the untold series and um they told us, they're like, we're going to knock it out of the park if you let us do it. And uh, it's just, like I said, super surreal. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're open to we're open to it. If, if Netflix feels like they, they want more, I mean, we're, we're definitely open to it. But, you know, nothing set in stone right now. OK, well, now uh, I'll be watching. <laughs> you can tell there's an absolute a appetite for it. But here's my thing, A.J., as a guy who worked 17 years in the Western Hockey League, I'm a hockey guy to the bone. My dad worked in the NHL for 26 seasons. I'm watching it going, is this really real? Like, I remember the United Hockey League, obviously the UHL. I know guys have played in it. But that scene where Brad Wingfield said that he looked at your dad and your dad would, like, nod for him to fight. I'm like, come on, really? Come on. And I love fighting. But I'm like, is this for real? 
But obviously, it was all for real. But you could see how, A, hockey isn't anywhere like that anymore. And you could see how some people might think, if you, especially if you weren't a hockey fan, that this, is, this has got to be staged. I mean, yeah. I mean, I've had people come up to me and, and be like, hey, AJ, this was a great documentary, but how, how, you know, embellished was it? You know, how fake is it? And I'm like, listen, <laughs> I'm telling you, I mean, listen, I'll take a lie detector test. I mean, they were, it was super accurate. You know, the whole thing was just, um, I would say it's like 98% accurate, you know, just little nitpicky things that only probably I would notice, but, um, that's how it was. And like you said, I mean, hockey back then was totally different. And, um, you know, we, we just, uh, you know, we intimidation, mental warfare, anything we could do to get the advantage. Um, you know, we told that line from, you know, see how, how far we could push it. But, um, yeah, it was, it was extremely accurate. Let me ask you this. What was left out? If anything, and I ask that because I've written three books, and when I do interviews, the people often, the hosts often say, "What did, what did you leave out?" And a lot of times, I've said I left out nothing. But did you, did you guys leave anything out of this that could be put into the next series? Well, yeah, I think I think um, you know, for for a documentary, only one episode that's you know around an hour and a half. I mean, unfortunately, I mean they did speak with other players that, unfortunately, for whatever you know, one reason or not, you know, you can't. You know, unfortunately, you can't have 100 characters in a documentary for an hour and a half. So there were some players that that were interviewed that unfortunately didn't make the final uh, cut. Yeah, I mean, there's so many. I mean, just so many different stories, big, small. I mean, um, you know, I think the big thing right now that that I, I brought up in an interview recently was, you know, the NHL trying to sue us. Um, you know, things like that, that, that didn't really make the doc. But there's just... I mean, it's like peeling an onion. I mean, there's just so many, you know, you're either going to cry out of laughter or cry out of sadness, cry out of anger. I mean, there's just so many layers to the story that, you know, you just unfortunately can't really get to in an hour and a half. ESPN, you must have been very grateful for the coverage that they gave you. People told me that they only covered you because you guys were just down the street from Bristol. Uh, who cares? Um, that must have really helped with your legitimacy as a pro hockey franchise. Well, listen, yeah, I mean, technically, I, I guess they're down the road from us, but but no one's coming to Danbury just for fun. I mean, uh, it, it's one of those things where <laughs> Danbury, is, it's a, it's, this is why part of the reason we did what we did, because um, Danbury didn't really have an identity. I mean, uh, we're so close to New York, you know what I mean? It's like Connecticut, we're kind of like a forgotten city out here. And uh, New York obviously won't claim us because we're part of Connecticut. So it's one of those situations where... Unless there's something really big going on here, I mean, no one, no one's, uh, no one's tripping over themselves to come to Danbury. But it, it, it obviously was extremely um, humbling, and it was great to, great to work with them. You know, Darren Ravel was one of the first interviews I ever did in my life. You know, and uh, you know, it, we we were on Sports Center that one time, which was super crazy, and uh, it was just, um, it was just a great time. AJ, can I ask you what you would owe your humble nature too and i'm not saying this to kiss your butt there was something about you in the show that you're magnetic and even here now you're not faking it was this something that your dad or your parents put in you or what what's the deal because again you come from money but nobody would know it and you authentically love the danbury trashers you're not just some kid with some toy that his dad bought him were you born that way or what what's the reason for that Listen, you know, I, I always uh, I've always been very conscious of what I have compared to others, you know. Um, and look, don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it's not like I could retire tomorrow and be fine. I mean, I still have to work. But, you know, listen, I, I my dad has always believed in me for whatever the reason. Um, he's always put me in positions to be successful. But you also have to produce. I mean, I learned very early on. I mean, I was at his garbage dump every summer since five years old. So I've been around all sorts of people. Um, I'd be picking the garbage some summers with the guys, you know. So my dad, my dad came from nothing. My dad came from dirt. So frankly, he would never let me be anything other than humble. Because first of all, he he'd um, 
he'd slap me upside the head if he had to, number one. And number two, um, I don't think, I, I've always been very conscious of my position and, um, you know, I, I'm very grateful, but I, I also am humble that I know that I could work just as hard as anybody if I have to. So, to be, I mean, I, I think I really inherited his work ethic. I don't think I'll ever work as hard as him, but I mean, he he's going to be 69 years old. He's selling an oil truck every morning, five in the morning. I mean, he's just, he's just running on a different type of motor. I don't know what battery he's on, but, um, you know, you have no choice but to be humble. You know, I was around a lot of guys that, you know, if, if you got out of line, I mean, you, 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 you'll deal with it. You know, that's the reality. You, they would never let me, no one was ever going to let me feel special. And, um, you know, like I said, I, I'm conscious of my position and I have to work twice as hard to gain respect from people because people are expecting, you know, I hate the word spoiled, you know, spoiled to me is like spoiled food, spoiled milk. Uh, I, I know I was fortunate growing up, but I also had to work twice as hard to gain respect because um, people weren't expecting me to, to work the way I did. And um, I continue to do so. Hey, let me just, before I let you go, because you guys loved what you were doing, owning that Danbury Trashers, has there been an opportunity for sports ownership since, or do you think there will be now in the future? I got to think there's had been a lot of opportunities present themselves here since this documentary dropped. So uh, what do you have to say about that? No, a lot of people have asked me that, especially in like hockey circles, has like anything come up since the trashers? And the reality is, is no. I mean, um, I haven't been approached at all. And uh, I don't know, maybe, you, look, at this point in my life, everything in my life has been so random. Who knows? You know, I could be sitting a year from now. Who knows what position I could potentially be in? But, you know, you always got to be ready for an opportunity, no matter what it is. I mean, maybe I'll be running a circus one day. I mean, who knows? I mean, you just, you got to be ready for whatever, like, throws at you. <laughs> you were running a circus in the Danbury. I was, I was segueing into that. I was segueing into that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, have you heard from a lot of the guys since, by the way? I mean, some guys got together for the interview, obviously, Brad Wingfield being one, which incidentally, I looked the dude up. Was he's from BC, played for Colonia, played like 10 years pro. I mean, these are all legitimate guys. How many of them have you heard from since the show dropped? Well, honestly, ever, you know, I, even before Netflix, you know, dropped the documentary, you know, I, I, I speak to guys, you know, whether it's Facebook or social media, some of them I still communicate with phones and, um, you know, it's a brotherhood. I mean, it, I think now more than ever, it, it's kind of like a badge of honor to have played for this team. Um, even if you played one game for us, I mean, if you wore the jersey, I, I think there's like this sense of pride now. Um and it's it's really cool to see, you know, a, a lot of guys, um, they, they seem to have like this. I mean, yeah, I mean, so many guys have reached out and, and they kind of said the same thing that I said earlier. They're like, man, they're like, there's so many other stories that, you know, every guy has like 30 stories themselves, what they could tell, you know. So it's it's uh, it's funny. I mean, there's a lot there. I mean, you never know for the future. I mean, this this story doesn't seem to want to go to bed. So who knows where the near future, you know, what it holds for, for this story and this team. Well, congratulations on the success of it so far. I just couldn't turn away from it. And uh, I appreciate you for being such a great guy and coming on and spending the time. And good luck with whatever the future holds, AJ. Hope we can do it again someday. Anytime, guys. I really appreciate the opportunity. All right. Appreciate you. AJ Galante, owner of the Danbury Trashers. Amazing. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the RP Show on YouTube. And don't forget, we're live daily on YouTube from noon to 2 Eastern. If you like what you see, hit subscribe. And if you like the program, check around for other segments of The Rod Peterson Show here on YouTube.